We road trip our way west to a town nestled in the valley of the Housatonic River. Just under two and a half hours from Boston is Great Barrington, population 7,500. Somewhat in the shadow of neighboring Lenox and Stockbridge, Great Barrington shines if you give it a chance. The Edward Hopper-esque downtown is lined with historic buildings and small distinctive shops straight out of a pop-up book. Robin Helfand opened Robin's Candy on Main Street in 2008. It's walkable, it's friendly, there's everything from a hardware store to a toy store to an old-fashioned candy shop, and it's a real hub of activity. High-end knitwear and women's clothing attract the fashion forward. Locals and visitors alike often pair dinner with a show at the Mahewi Performing Arts Center. Mahewi means downstream and it refers to the Housatonic River right down the block. Uh, it's a Mohican term. Built in 1905 as a vaudeville house, this 650-seat hall is no typical small-town theater. Headliners include Melissa Etheridge, Amy Mann, and Whoopi Goldberg, among many others. The all-star lineup is just one reason why the Mahewi is a community fixture, says executive director Beryl Jolly. We're also showing HD broadcasts, live performances of rock stars, Broadway stars, jazz legends, dance companies, and then a number of community events. The performers really appreciate this intimate perspective, as do the crowds. Close to downtown, a center that pays homage to a civil rights legend, W.E.B. Du Bois, who was born, raised, and educated in Great Barrington. He graduated number one in his high school class when he decided to go off to college, and for a young black man to even consider college was something very extraordinary. But the three uh, different churches in the area uh, put together funds to send to Fisk University. Stop by the Du Bois Center and meet Executive Director Randy Weinstein and his trusty companion, Everett. Weinstein has amassed a literal library of civil rights treasures, included signed books by writers Amiri Baraka and Maya Angelou, as well as Du Bois himself, a scholar who co-founded the NAACP. He wrote over 20 books, whether it was novels, whether it was history. He wrote the definitive work on sociology for the period, the definitive work on American history post-Civil War for the period. Du Bois was also an environmentalist who remained inspired by the Berkshires' beauty throughout his life. Great Barrington was home to him, plain and simple. No matter where he went throughout the world, this is the one place he could come back to Other historic figures also favored Great Barrington. In 1850, Nathaniel Hawthorne and Herman Melville met on the mountain, had a picnic, and took refuge from a storm in a cave there, where Melville discussed some of his ideas that he was percolating for a new book he was writing called Moby Dick. They later became lifelong friends, and Moby Dick was even dedicated to Nathaniel Hawthorne when it was published. Brian Crewe is general manager of the Trustees of Reservations, Southern Berkshire's properties. Monument Mountain has been a really important landmark here in Berkshire County for centuries. First, as an important, sacred Native American hunting ground, then as a source of industry, and then later, around the mid-19th century, it became really a source of recreation and enjoyment. Today, hikers can explore the Melville Trail on Monument Mountain, as well as other cool and shady paths. We've got about three miles of trails. We say that it's a moderate trail, but you want to come prepared to bring plenty of water, wear appropriate footwear, and be prepared for a 720-foot elevation change. We also ask that you kind of leave things as you found it. It's also a conservation area as well. And that hike up Monument Mountain can get a little bit steep depending on how far you go, so make sure you read up before going and choosing which path to take. W.E.B. Du Bois's first wife and two of his children are buried in a cemetery directly behind the center in Great Barrington. Du Bois himself is buried in Ghana, where he settled in his later years. He died in 1963 at the age of 95. Up next, a family business takes root in Truro.